How to draw and fire a carbine or shotgun like a badass for movies and TV. That's what we'll answer in today's video. Hi, my name is Dylan Wilson with CBT Stunt Alliance. Train hard, perform easy. We help actors, stunt performers, filmmakers, and content creators on professional stunt training for use in film, TV, and live action entertainment. Before we get underway, if you'd like to learn how to add rifle, carbine, and shotgun movie gun training to your current acting or stunt performance skill set, check out our highly popular online master course at MovieRifleTraining.com. You can learn all the movie set gun safety basics, how to properly hold a rifle or carbine, how to draw and shoot a rifle, carbine, or shotgun for film and television, you know, tact uh, reloads, also how to do scene work with carbines and rifles and more. All taught by pro armors for the film and television industry. You can sign up now and start training now. Go to MovieRifleTraining.com for more information or click on the link below this video. Okay, so we get a lot of questions about tactical movie gun training for film and television. So we're gonna share a few tips with you. So why even use the sling arms draw? Because many actors and stunt performers already have the carbine out in their arms in the scene because they in production don't know how to do this. So you can actually bring more production value and show more character development when you draw the rifle or shotgun from a sling position. The sling position is where the military, mercenaries, hunters, etc. carry their rifles when they need their hands free for some reason. Check out this clip from the movie Sniper to see this in action. I had a lot of SWAT training, all right? Urban anti-terrorist picks, you know? I never actually done a creep. The army ever put you in the jungle? Well, deepest, darkest North Carolina jungle, yeah. You want to survive this, right? You want to answer to that? You do as I tell you to the letter. I think you got a chance. Well, okay. Now I'm actually an experienced stunt coordinator in armor for film and TV turned full-time director. This is something I plan to do from the beginning of my career, even attending and graduating film school as a director. Along my journey, I noticed that being a stunt coordinator in armor made me a better director, and being a director made me a better stunt coordinator in armor. Now how this benefits you is that I can share with you insights and experience from both sides of the camera, as well through all phases of production. Okay, so before we begin movie gun training, we always do a safety briefing. Now, this is different than the one that we do on set since you're at home and we're not actually issuing any prop guns to you. Yet with us, safety is always paramount. This will serve as your safety briefing. Again, it's different than the ones that we do on set since we're not issuing you any movie guns. Yet since we wish to instill safe practices into you, we modified it for your benefit. So pick up your movie prop gun, keep your finger off the trigger, make sure it's on safe as well as unloaded. So finger here on the frame, unloaded. Same with this one. Finger here, unloaded, and it's on safe. Now, as a reminder, never do any movie gun training with real firearms. Do not do dry fire, make sure you invest in a, a good movie prop. If you need to find one, watch our video on how to get a, a movie prop gun for cheap. The link is below this video. We're going to cover some prop gun safety rules that you can use at home. These are different from gun safety rules that you use on a live fire range. You can learn more about the differences with our highly popular video, Real Firearms Training versus Movie Gun Training. The link to it is below this video. So I wish for you to, to memorize the acronym DIFU or DIFU. The DI stands for direction. So we always want, we always want to point the movie gun in a safe direction and never point it at another person. Even if it's a, uh, you know, airsoft or something like that, it doesn't matter. You always, you always train the same way. So there are two directions that are, you are clear to point the firearm in. One is straight down into the ground. So if you're up standing around you're between scenes or something, you can take the pistol or the carbine and just let it hang by your side and point straight down to the ground. That's a safe direction. The second direction is whatever the armor determines to be downrange, which is safe. 
And for you, that'll be a wall. So you choose a wall in your house or your apartment. Make sure it's not a place that's highly trafficked where people can walk in front of you or something. It could even be aiming inside of a closet, right? So whatever, whatever place is good for you. For me, it's gonna be a 180 degree arc from this wall all the way out to camera to this wall. I won't be pointing back that way because sometimes I'll have to show you like this and then sometimes I'll show you like this. So then this 180 degree arc is, my, is down range for me, yet I won't point it back that way. And this is how you have to be so you always are aware of where you're pointing your, your movie prop gun. The F is you always keep your finger off the trigger and you wanna keep it on the frame of any movie prop gun that you're carrying. Keep it away, don't put it here. Some people put it here in a trigger guard or something like that, no, keep it on the frame until the armorer tells you or shows you otherwise. The U stands for unloaded, so keep it unloaded and you can always check and make sure it's unloaded once again until the armorer tells or shows you otherwise. Okay, this concludes our safety briefing. Now that you've done that, go ahead and insert one magazine into your movie prop gun. And listen to the instructions given by the armorer. So we're going to show you a draw that you can do. Actually, it's really good for playing a villain role, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to start from a position from a sling position. So you wanna make sure you have a sling on the carbine that you're practicing with. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hold the sling like this. We're gonna start our arm in straight at shoulder height, like so, right? Boom, we're here. So at this point, you know, we do something, we call it, you know, shooting the shit. We're kind of talking to our comrades or colleagues or whatever. And then we're gonna, you know, identify a threat and then we're gonna do the draw. Now I'm gonna demonstrate the draw and then show it to you in slow motion. Threat. Bang, bang. All right? So I'm going to break that down for you. First thing you do is hold the thing like so. You insert your arm through like this. So it's comfortably resting on your shoulder. And believe me, when you have a non-firing replica or, you know, a blank firing gun, they're heavy. You're going to want to know how to use that sling because carrying your arm is very heavy. So you're, you're shooting the shit. You're, you're talking because usually when you're doing a draw, you're going to be at a state of rest, right? If you learn this draw, the director is going to love you and you're going to be in the final cut. 99 times out of 100, you're going to be in the final cut of the, of the, of the movie. So here's what you do. Threat. Your hand, your uh, firing hand reaches back and touches the, uh, the stock of the, of the firearm, about in the middle. And all you're going to do is rotate it forward like this. Now while the firing hand is rotating the stock forward, the support hand is positioning itself coming up like this and if you notice you see I'm turning it like this so that's how I put it into the hand and now from here I go here I disengage the safety and I fire bang bang now as far as disengaging a safety on a carbine on this particular carbine you see the safety is right here so to disengage it the safety is on to disengage it you want to turn it to semi-automatic or even full automatic depending on what the armor tells you so it's good to practice this way you may or may not have to use this on set, and we'll cover that later, yet for training purposes, because we always do things that are combat oriented first and then we modify for film. So even for combat, you know, each time I'm firing, I'm disengaging a safety. You can't see that, I'll do it this way, I'll, I'll slow down. Right, that's when you're legit. So we're gonna do it one more time on this side, and I'll show it on the other side as well. Again, we're shooting the shit. Threat! Bang, bang. Important thing is to be able to do it on both sides, be ambidextrous. So I'm gonna do it on the same on the other side. Threat! Bang, bang. Same thing also works with a shotgun. Depending on the character that you're playing, you may wanna be the one with the street sweeper. So we'll do the same exact thing. We're here, shooting the shit. Other cowboys, cowgirls around you. Threat! Right? That's how it works. Broken out step by step to make it easier for you to understand. Lastly, we'll finish up by sharing some tips for character development, film and TV, production recommendations, and more. Yet before we do, check this out. Let's take a sneak peek and look inside this master course 
that was made by professional armorers for film and TV, stunt coordinators, actors, and filmmakers for professional actors, stunt performers, and filmmakers and content creators. By the way, if you're a veteran or experienced with firearms, you're going to learn how to convert your skills into movies and TV. Now, the first thing you see is you notice that we designed our platform to be intuitive and easy to use. So it's right here, how many classes, there are 91 instructional classes in here, so there's a lot of information in here to fuel your entire career. Also, each master course starts out with an introduction and a safety briefing from your instructors. Let's go ahead and hop in and take a look at one of them. Now let's listen to what they have to say. It has value, and those teachers oftentimes are able to help other people grow, expand, and become more. So when you have that rare occasion, when you can have those who- and They actually you know, share their background, you know, their pertinent information and actually brief you to be safe as you're going through the training. Plus, you also see that there is a, a cheat sheet, which is an actual handout that accompanies a course, which is so crucial to help you learning everything. We're going to take a look at that in a moment. Plus, we have our, our private online social community, which we'll actually take a look at a little bit later on. These are all resources that, in, that are here to help you and support you as you go your career. Plus, you get uh, premium email support, you know, our email address, you can ask us questions you know, at any time. As you notice, our innovative master course platform shows you if you finished that instructional or not, right? So let's say if you're you're going through the instructionals and you haven't, uh, you, you've watched like one or two of them and then you get busy and you're not able to, to look at the game for a week. Well, otherwise you have to come back and try to figure out which video you left off at and you had to rewatch certain videos. No, it tells you which one you actually completed, what percentage uh, of the unit you completed as well as which one to start at next. Also, it's broken down to be very easy to learn. So each of these blocks here is called a unit. And each of these is a, a video instructional, each one about 10 minutes long. We keep them about 10 minutes long so they're bite sized easy to absorb. There are some that are a little bit longer because they have to be. Yet for the most part, each one is 10 minutes long. So let's go ahead and take a look at one now. We're gonna look at the Carbine Rifle, Submachine Gun, and Shotgun Academy. And you know, here we'll take a look at some of the shooting stances. Take a look at the crouch. So let's take a listen in this instructional on how to do one of the shooting stances known as the crouch. And you know, like this. The thinking is also a lot of times they'll have body armor or a ballistic vest or, or some type of ballistic protection. And when they're doing that, if you notice his shoulders are square, let's go directly towards the camera, his shoulders. And you see it's step-by-step -step instructional so you learn exactly what to do you know, you learn the reasons why you're doing it and you learn how to play it perfectly for camera each and every time. So here's another unit, pro screen tips for carbine and rifle. So let's take a look at one now, cinematic carbine reload number one, a tactical reload. So when he pulls it, he's gonna produce it like that. And now it's gonna be in his hand. And you see how it forms an L shape with the other magazine. So his, now his support hand, you take some hand dexter, some, some uh, dexterity rather, it forms the L shape, that's the key thing. You know, one of the other things, there are things that we call live action video displays, and these are actually clips from movies, like we have one here uh, from the movie John Wick, that shows you how everything that you're learning, how it actually looks in the final cut in the movie, so you observe how it all ties together. So let's take a, a, a listen to this one from the movie John Wick. These are transitions and reloads. There's, there's that reload. You see how quickly it happens. Yeah, we're gonna go on down to the shotgun clinic. And it shows you everything you need to know cinematically on how to use the, the shotgun to, uh, for dramatic effect. Let's take a look at one of these. So from here, I'm here, I play the camera, and then I go up and down. That sound and that motion, and if you observe, you probably saw the shell. And once again, let's take a look at one of the live action video displays for that same one, for the dramatic one arm reload with the shotgun. We'll look at how it was used in a movie before. One of the other favorites with stunt performers and actors is the car is the unit, the carbine disarm double play. And these are some of the disarms that are the most cinematic and famous used in, uh, in all of film and TV history. Let's take a look at one of these now. So I'm here. Yeah, I step and grab. All right, I'm secure. I'm locked it in my shoulder. Try to pull this away from me. See this locked in? Everything we're showing you is combat effective. Right? It also is Now I'm going to step with this foot. 
this hand I'm going to throw a punch going across. This one is our monthly sharpen and polish video conference lab. Each month we do this and it's designed to actually help you with your career. Try it 48 hours risk free. If you don't like our carbine and rifle movie gun training master course or don't think it will work for you, we'll refund every penny. Who else lets you go through their movie gun training and then if you're not happy, it gives you a complete refund. Bottom line, we're passionate about making our customers happy and keeping them that way. So well worth the investment if you're serious about learning rifle, carbine, and shotgun movie gun training. Now we'll finish up by sharing some tips for character development, film and TV production recommendations, and more. All right, specifically for film, some tips. I mentioned before about disengaging the safety. The armor on set is gonna let you know if you need to do that or not. If you're the one with a shotgun, if you have that privilege, then you probably are because the first round or there probably won't be a round actually loaded into the shotgun. So you'll need to, to actually chamber round into the shotgun, or chamber blank, like so, into the shotgun to, uh, to be able to fire it. So you'll need to be able to learn how to use the safety. If it's going to be, if they're using VFX muzzle flares, you'll probably have a non-firing replica or something, and it may or not, may not be important if you use the safety or not. Though uh, it's good to practice it anyway. The other thing is uh, rolls that are good for, this is great for cowboy rolls, you can see that, you know, again, what it, we say a villain, yet it could just be, you know, you just be a badass cowboy, and that's just your style of drawing, right? Also good for, not for soldiers, because soldiers don't train that way, if you're a mercenary, the perfect type thing to, to develop a mercenary character, again, a general badass, like a John Wick, or, you know, a, a Proud Mary type character, you know, that same kind of thing works, and even for sci-fi, a futuristic type project it still works as long as a sci-fi weapon has a sling on it you can do the same thing okay so make sure you like this video and smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next movie prop gun training video also make sure you sign up for our pro stunt tips email newsletter to get professional movie gun prop training tips in your inbox lastly if you like more information on our highly popular online rifle carbine and shotgun master course go to movierifletraining.com or click on the link below this video. Prepare to have your mind blown. Again, my name is Dylan Wilson with CBT Stunt Alliance. Train hard, perform easy. Don't miss our next video where we share with you another tactical movie gun training tip. See you next video.